Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan and I'm also known as RM2K Dev. In our last video we created a sprite and an, um, we created a hero sprite, the object that represents that hero and just a basic room to set that hero up. We also configured a few settings throughout Game Maker. In this video we're going to be going over creating, not creating, sorry, using an RPG Maker tile set to create a, a level for our game. So let's get started. The first thing that you're probably going to want to do is find an RPG Maker tile set. And I found this one here online. It's just a compilation of the entire RPG Maker VX runtime package tile sets. And if we just have a look at that, what you'll see is you'll see the, some of the auto tiles on the right hand side here. You'll see some of the cliff faces and some houses. You'll also see the common ground tiles on the left hand side here and a few of the objects. So let's begin by importing this into our RPG Maker project. Now, a lot of people tend to cut these up into individual tiles and use objects because they find that the RPG that they sorry the Game Maker tile tiling setup isn't great. Um, this may be changing in upcoming versions, say 1.3 and 1.4, but for the moment, this is what we have to use. Now, in the past, I've used the actual RPG Maker software to create maps and bring images across. Uh, found this to be particularly useful when creating smaller maps, but we do run into memory problems in doing that. So I've come up with a workflow that seems to work for me to use the Game Maker tile tile engine, um, and let's. Uh, I'm sort of going to go over that in this video. So let's begin by creating a background. I'm going to call this background tile set main. What you do is you just load this background, load it in, find that tile set that you downloaded earlier. You may already have one, you don't have to use the same resources I'm using, um, but yeah. So just bring that in, and there we go, we've got that as the background now. If you tick this box here that says use as tile set, and leave it set to 16 by 16. Now I do know that some of these tiles are 32 by 32 pixels, but things like uh, the auto tiles, since we're not going to have automatic auto tiles in the Game Maker engine, we are going to need to select tiles at a 16 by 16 resolution. Select OK and go back to our main map. I've called mine RM Intro. Now under the tiles option here, select BG tile set main. And what this will give you is the tile set that we just created. Now if you extend your window just a little bit, you'll be able to see most of these tiles here. Now again, this isn't the greatest tile letter set, but we, we do have to live with what we've been given. Um, so what you'll see is we're able to select here in 16 by 16 chunks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, I'm going to hold down shift, I'm going to select this top left corner here, and I'm just going to drag, and this lets you select more than one. So this is going to allow us to select 32 by 32 size chunks. Now let's call, let's delete layer 1000, sorry, or one, 1 million, whatever that number is. That's not going to let us, okay, we'll keep it at that then. We're going to, we're going to use that as our base ground layer. So what we do is, sorry, I've just created the small tile, we need to create a 32. Let's begin by placing four corners, very simply like this. There we go. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Normally, you wouldn't be able to select this as a tile, these four here. But because we're using 16 by 16 uh, tile sizes, we are actually able to select that. So, if you hold down shift and drag across, you can place the top edge. Then we select the bottom edge, holding down shift again, holding down shift and dragging across, we're able to create that across, and now we do the same thing for the sides. Hold down shift and drag, select the top left corner of the tile, hold down shift, drag it out to select the entire tile, come over to the map editor, hold down shift, click and drag. This is going to give us our entire outset, the, the outside section of our map. Now if we grab the inside section, hold down shift, we can do the same thing. There we go. So now we have a small ground plane to walk on. So this is the basis of how we use RPG Maker tiles. It's not the most effective as I said. Um, the tile editor could be much better, but this is all we have to use for the moment. So. Let's create a new layer. We're going to create this layer 10 layers below the current layer. So this is going to be, if we delete this number here and create 9, then all I do is 9, 9, 9, 9, and we're 10 below. On this layer, we're going to create our grass. We're just going to put some grass on the map. 
Also another important thing to note, it is kind of important to keep track of these layers because we're unable to rename them in, in the layer editor. So if we add this layer here to our notepad list, we call this 10, 10, 10, 10. We call this one here floor. Then if we go to our next layer, we're going to call this one here 999990. Sorry, there should be another 9 there. Also, one less. We're going to call this layer paths and grass. So again, this is where we can start to select uh, the center of this grass. And let's just block in a shape. Let's just block in a couple of shapes like this. Now, I am not the world's best map editor um, by far. I do not spend a lot of time making maps, so you're going to have to forgive me if this doesn't look so great. What we'll do next is we will begin to fill the edges in. Basically, we do this by selecting an edge. In this case, we're going to need to use this one. Sorry, wrong, wrong edge there. Um, sorry, one other thing to note is try to keep your tiles, if you can, to be spaced two apart so that way you do have room to place these edges. So let's put the edges on. Now for doing this we need to change our snap to 16 by 16. We can zoom in on our editor a little bit here. Just use your mouse wheel and if you click and drag you can also move the map, the map around. But what this lets us do is this lets us place edges. So all we do now is we just place these edges in. What I'll do is I'll start with the corners, all of the top left corners basically is what I'll place into the map at the moment. Okay, now I do hope I haven't missed any of those, but we will soon see. So now hold down shift and select two of the top grass items and we can begin to fill in the top rows. said don't feel too impatient about doing this good games do take time to develop and while it does help to have tools like auto tools this is how it was done previously you know back in the old the old NES days the Super NES days games like Final Fantasy didn't have auto tiles and their editors had to go through the same process and like I said you will get better results in doing this And there we have it. We can set our snap back to 32 by 32. And we've created a grass, a small grass map for our hero to walk on. Now if I re-enable the use of views, which I disabled in the previous video, and I begin to run the game, what you'll see is our hero is now able to move across this landscape. And in using the tile engine, you end up with a much more optimized game. This game will run at 60 frames per second without fail. 
So there we go. That's the start of our tile engine. So now the next thing we're going to do, let's begin by creating some objects. Go back to our folder and have a look at your tile set. Find an object that you wish to bring into your game. In our tutorial series here, I'm going to use this tree down in the bottom left hand corner of my screen. I just put a little circle around it. We're going to use that tree there. Later on I'll show you some cool animation techniques for that tree. But something that we need to attempt to do is get our game to be sort of off the grid. We, we don't want objects to be sitting on the grid exactly and this is something that other game engines do. So I'm going to show you that in the next video.